I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. We live in a pretty crazy world, eh? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I just read the news here that um, the German Chancellor is interested in LNG exports, liquefied natural gas. Canada has lots of natural gas. We just don't have export terminals where we need them. Um, mostly because environmental groups have blocked them. <laughs> but anyway, but Canada doesn't want to give natural gas to Germany. They want to uh, sign a hydrogen deal with them. Now, it would be funny if it wasn't so sad. And obviously all the climate activists, even the people I've mentioned in previous videos in the medical community, are advocating for an accelerated transition to clean energy. And so hydrogen is perceived to be clean energy because once you burn it, all you get is basically water. There's no, there's no emissions, there are no uh, PM 2.5, no noxious emissions. So it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? It's just that it's an impossible equation. And I refer you to uh, Professor Emeritus Samuel Ferfari and his book, The Hydrogen Illusion. And he's been working on hydrogen for decades as a chemical engineer, trying to make it into a workable uh, process or, or a substance that could be used for heating, for energy, for all kinds of things. But it's just a no-go. And, uh, and one of the reasons why it has been so successfully promoted is apparently that this fellow, Jeremy Rifkin, is uh, a very charming and entertaining speaker. And in uh, much of his work here, he claims that he has uh, influenced global energy policies, including those of Angela Merkel of Germany, which we see has almost brought Germany to its knees. So let me explain why it's a problem. Uh, hydrogen is not an energy itself, it's an energy carrier. So, you know, when I have this piece of wood, if I burn it, I get energy. Uh, but if I have hydrogen, I have to actually first capture it. I have to capture it in a container where it won't escape. So hydrogen is the smallest molecule, meaning that even with a very strong metal container, it can embrittle that container and find a way to leak out. When it leaks out, it's an invisible gas. Just the leaking out of it, the static flow of hydrogen can spark a fire and an explosion. And hydrogen is extremely explosive. It's not something that just should really be in the public's hands. It should be in a controlled laboratory uh, environment where there's proper monitoring equipment to keep it safe. So um, the other thing with hydrogen is that there's an energy loss every step of the way. Now the utopians like Jeremy Rifkin and like our uh, uh, Natural Resources Minister Jonathan Wilkinson obviously think, well, you know, this is fantastic, it's a clean burning energy, um, and all we need to do is hook it up to a wind farm, and then the wind farm will do the electrolysis process to break down hydrogen from water and turn it into a storable gas, and voila, that'll be simple, won't it? Well, it's just not that simple, and there's a very good video by a Dutch engineer explaining that. But um, what I think is very important to understand is that Germany doesn't need hydrogen. Germany had its own plan for hydrogen. They don't need hydrogen from Canada. They need natural gas. And you know why? Because they're a huge industrial power in the world. One of their biggest facilities is the BASF facility at Ludwigshafen. This facility processes natural gas into a product stream of chemicals. So they need natural gas for the heat, the energy to create the industrial processes. And they need natural gas as a substance to create the product stream. And the products they produce there are many thousands of products and chemicals that we use in the world every day. And they employ about 30,000 people 
at this facility. So uh, they don't need hydrogen there because with hydrogen, you can't make any of that product stream. You might be able to use hydrogen as a source of thermal energy, although it's very explosive. It would have to be carefully managed. But you could not use hydrogen to make those products. So Germany needs natural gas. They don't need hydrogen. They have their own hydrogen plan, and in fact, they even had planned on importing hydrogen from Russia. Um, and Canada is making a fool's errand here to make a hydrogen terminal to try and support Germany in their time of need, when they should be building an LNG terminal, a liquefied natural gas terminal. Because whether or not Germany buys liquefied natural gas from Canada, having that extra supply on the market would really make a big difference to the, the gap that there is now. There's a, prices are high because there's an energy shortage. And there's an energy shortage because environmental groups, bankers like Mark Carney, the UNPRI, they've all driven off investors from oil, gas, and coal. And so those companies have said, you know what, we're not going to go there. We're just going to stop developing new um, plays of oil, gas, and, and uh, resources like coal. So really, this is um, more net zero catastrophe for Canada. It's one of the worst decisions we could ever make. Um, and, uh, you know, hydrogen is very, very important in terms of making um, fertilizer. That's for sure. So we always will need hydrogen. We will need to produce hydrogen. Uh, but the notion that we can ship it on a pipe, pipe it into your house, or put it in your car, uh, with no concerns for society. Um, well, you know, I'm not an expert in the field, but Professor Fafari certainly is. I recommend you read his book. It's also available in French. It's a very short little read, but it encapsulates his many decades of work on the project of making hydrogen into a, a um, modern day miracle for uh, transport heating and other kinds of energy uses. It's really a niche market and otherwise it's a no-go. So it's difficult, you know, what are we going to do to resolve this problem? Because we have these two worlds, it seems. Oh, we have the world of ideologues and climate activists. We have the world of engineers and chemists and scientists. And these guys are driving public policy. These guys are driving fear of climate change catastrophe. These guys don't know that hydrogen is not an energy source. It's a carrier of energy, but it's not a source of energy and it has to be made. These guys know that, but nobody's listening to them. How are we going to resolve this problem? Because the outcome will be catastrophic for society very expensive and no benefit in the long run and perhaps many, many expensive and dangerous challenges along the way. Think about it. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.